Hello and welcome to Bud's RPG Review, where I give my thoughts on role-playing games, card games and board games. Today's retro review is Devil's Children for Call of Cthulhu by Pagan Publishing. First a bit of history. Devil's Children was originally ran as a two-session game of Conquest in 1992 and then published as a book in 1993. The game is to be run for four players using two sets of pre-made characters and is touted as a departure from the regular Call of Cthulhu fare. Ok, to the overview. The story centres around four students in Arkham who are taking a course in American history who plan to help each other out in passing the examination by sharing notes and the cost of the books for the course. Unfortunately, they all incorrectly assume the others were doing their share of the work while not doing their bit, which resulted in them all being at the point of failing the course. They've been given an extension for their essay, which they unwisely used to go to a party. While driving back from the party, the four hapless students crash the car and are all killed. Niall Athotep, in his guise as the Black Man, resurrects the students in exchange for them writing their name in the Book of Azathoth, and wipes the event from their minds, leaving them believing they simply survived a car crash. The students, in a last-ditch effort to get information for their essay, decided to conduct a seance. The visions from the seance make up Act 1 of the scenario. The seance picks up in Salem, 1692, where a coven of witches, sure by four members, are preparing to induct four young women members by getting them to sign the Book of Azathoth. As they are being prepared, four other young women walk by, the four girls that the players play, and instead, Niall Athotep selects these girls for the coven. The girls, infused with power, have over the last 250 years been rampaging across the country until they were stopped in the 1940s by two private investigators and were sealed in the sewers below Arkham. Over the last 50 years, they have almost drained their power keeping themselves alive. While confined, they cursed the bloodlines of the descendants of the two PIs. Recent flooding due to storms has destroyed the part of the sewer where the witches are trapped. Seeking revenge, they hunt the descendants. This is the point where the second session starts. Also provided are notes on setting the stage for the adventure, including lighting to use and how to set up the table, and sound effects. We are then presented with the character sheets for the four young girls that the players will play in the first session. Bridget Bishop, Susanna Martin, Alice Parker and Margaret Scott. OK, to the first part of the adventure, Salem, 1692. The adventure begins with four young girls, Elizabeth Paris and her three friends, discussing marriage and the characteristics of their future husbands. Elizabeth has dwelled on it so much that she has asked her Jamaican servant, Tehube, to use her reputed magical powers to divine this information. Little do the girls know, but Tehube is part of a coven that has recently lost four members who were unmasked and lynched. Tehube convinces Elizabeth that she can join the coven and find out what she desires, but that the three other girls must join too. The adventure picks up on Monday the 1st of May 1692, where the other members of the coven are meeting in the woods to perform the ceremony where the girls can devote themselves to the black man. Unfortunately for the four player characters, Niall Athotep senses the four of the young girls, Bridget, Susanna, Alice and Margaret nearby, and decides that it is these four that he wants to complete his coven. The adventure goes on to play out some of the day-to-day life that the girls would do, and it includes a meeting a meal that the hallucinogenic mould Ergot has cultivated in. This gives the young girls harrowing nightmarish visions that are played out in full. It also includes a full trial by a mob where the girls are brutally murdered for being witches. The girls awaken after the hallucinations and head off home. The journey home in the dark is played out up to the point where they come upon the coven inducting new members and the black man himself. It continues with the girls waking up in bed thinking the events of the previous night were a horrific nightmare. That is until the witches' familiars arrive and introduce themselves. The end of the session plays out with the girls discovering that the previous evening was true and then fleeing into the forest where they are finally greeted by the black man holding the Book of Azathoth. Niall Athotep expands to a monstrous form of organs, limbs and flesh and surrounds the girls. And that is the end of Act 1. Act 2 starts with the four students awakening from the seance, in the dark, holding hands. The second session plays out with the four students investigating what they saw in their seance, and searching Miskatonic Library for information on the four witches and the Salem witch trials. The students start getting flashbacks and eventually find themselves in the loft of their student house that links their grandparents to the witches. The students are led eventually to the ghoul tunnels underneath Arkham, where they are herded towards the witches for a final showdown. In conclusion, I have mixed feelings about this adventure. The limit of four players is important in the context of the adventure, but I feel it also limits what groups could do. Also, there are three groups of four characters, which left me confused on multiple occasions. The depiction of Niall Athotep as an almost moustache-twirling cartoonish villain 
Getting them to sign their soul away just doesn't sit right with me. And the professor of the students being called E. Ralph Yatton was a bit of a dead giveaway to those of us who have faced the likes of the Royal Pant and Harley Patton before. Also, the breaking of the fourth wall and allowing one of the PCs a Cthulhu Mythos score as they've played the Call of Cthulhu RPG is again something that I don't find conducive to an atmosphere. The idea behind the adventure is a good one though, and it's generally well executed. It is worth noting that the quality of the handout is really good throughout. The Salem Witch Trials are a blight upon the history of America, and this adventure tries its best to draw attention to this, which is a good thing. It's worth noting that the adventure was written to commemorate the 300th anniversary of the trials, and that the four girls, Bridget, Alice, Susanna and Margaret, were real people who were tried and hanged for witchcraft, and at the time of writing had not been cleared of witchcraft posthumously. Thankfully, upon further research, it would appear that the four girls were acquitted in November of 2001. If you're after something a bit different to your usual Call of Cthulhu game, and you can find a copy, then you could do a lot worse than this. I give this a fair 6 out of 10. I think, in concept, it is good, but in practice, it isn't quite pulled off. If you enjoyed this review, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to check out my other reviews. But out.